Okay, I'll admit, this is not a question that would have crossed many of your minds, but it is the kind of question that keeps me occupied. How do you integrate electronics like this into a cup? If you do get to thinking about it, you'll find it's really very tricky. Actually, even simple things, you know, like a switch and a wireless transmitter is difficult. It's because a cup is a curved surface, and it needs to be dishwasher safe, and these little green boards of electronics that we have seemingly everywhere today, they're flat, and they're really not going to survive a dishwasher cycle. So today, this cup is not connected to the Internet of Things. Actually, despite all the hype, the only objects that are connected to the Internet of Things right now are some cameras, some thermostats, quite a few cars, perhaps, and one of those really, really expensive fridges. But tomorrow, our thirst for information means that almost everything will be. Today, because those little green boards are rigid and flat, we can clearly pick out what is electronics, and what has no electrical functionality. Tomorrow, we will want our electronics integrated into our devices without any design compromise to accommodate them. The technology to allow this already exists. This transformation has already begun. I think there are two ways. The manufacture of simple electronics will evolve, and for the foreseeable future, I expect both to have an important role although I bet number two wins in the end. The first is hyperscale production. It's mass manufacture of identical parts in a centralized location. Think of how we print newspapers, ink, onto paper, repeating for thousands and thousands of copies. This is a wonderful analogy, because electronics can be made in exactly this way, with roll-to-roll -roll presses churning out simple electronic circuits by the million. And this is the scale required, since some estimates suggest we'll connect 20 billion new devices to the Internet of Things by 2020. The printing technology already exists, but where we've needed a leap is in the functionality of the inks. Since printing began, inks have had just one functionality, it's the wavelengths of light that they reflect. They're a color. Recently, though, inks with additional functionalities have been created. For example, conductivity to make printed wires. Some inks, when they're dry, are semiconducting materials, allows us to print transistors, key components in signal processing, or OLEDs, or many kinds of sensor. Some inks are high-quality dielectrics. It means they can print capacitors, crucial for energy storage. Designing such inks and the components made with them are what my colleagues and I do. We quite literally print electronics. Manufacturing electronics on this scale gives us new possibilities. We can tag literally anything we like with a little electrically functional sticky label and connect it to the internet, which is great if you're a logistics company or you don't like queuing at the supermarket checkout. But it is still the addition of electronics to an existing object. It doesn't solve the design problem, and nor does it give me that cup with some built-in electronics. Printed electronics may have the answer to this, though, because the same electrically functional links, more or less, can be put into another type of printer, one that's very different from that roll-to-roll -roll press. It's a very common type of printer that many of you here will have at home or in your office to print your documents or your photos a digital printing technique called inkjet. As the name suggests, inkjet works by firing or jetting tens of thousands of tiny droplets every second, usually onto paper. Inkjet is already extensively used in industrial manufacturing. It's used to make obvious things like uh, magazines and printed packaging, and some less obvious things like perhaps your wallpaper. In fact, the total market size for inkjet printing is well in excess of $50 billion, with predictions of double-digit growth in the coming years. These industrial inkjet printers, they can print onto flat surfaces, 
but they can also print onto curved surfaces. They can print onto paper, but also plastic or ceramic. Which means, if we load them with electrically functional links, we can print a customized electric circuit onto an object during manufacturing, giving it features specific to that object and unique to what the designer has in mind. And this is a huge leap ahead in terms of creating the Internet of Things, because it's no longer an identical circuit tagged to the object, but it is a customized electronic circuit put in line with the manufacturing. These inkjet printers, though, they're still 2D printers. They can print the electronics, but they cannot print the object itself. For that, we need a newer digital printing technique called 3D printing or additive manufacturing. These 3D printers, they print out an object literally layer by layer by layer, and guided by a digital model designed on a computer. These 3D printers can create objects of almost any form or shape or geometry, including objects that are impossible to create by conventional manufacturing and crafting techniques. I believe the second way the manufacturing of simple electronics will go is the marriage of these two techniques of digital print, inkjet and 3D. And the breakthrough will be the ability to just print out an electrically functional object. The whole approach is based on digital models. These can be easily edited, customized, or scaled. With this manufacturing method, no two objects need to be completely identical. Individual pieces tailored for specific customers can be made just as easily as large numbers of perfect replicas. And the key thing for me, as this technology starts spreading, we'll be able to manufacture our objects locally rather than in far away, expensive production facilities. OK, I'm off to print myself a new cup. <laughs> I'll have a switch for the kettle built in, maybe a temperature sensor coupled to a light emission device. It can tell me if the drink's too hot, more likely too cold might even have a data logger in it. Anyway, none of that's important. What is important is that when I'm done, I'll upload the file. You will be able to download it. You can edit it to your taste. You can change its color. You can change its size. You can change its electrical functionality. And then print your own. Thank you. <laughs>